Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. If you're new here, today is a get ready with me day. And I'm excited because I thought it might be a good idea to switch it up a little bit and stop maybe using my everyday daily go-to shades and try something new and experiment today. You guys know I love to experiment. So I actually am, didn't, so I did most of my makeup with my new triple decker, but I actually went through my artist palettes and picked out shades I've either never used before or only used once or twice and <laughs> decided to do a full look of brand new shades to me or at least experimentation. experimentation with some shades I don't normally gravitate towards. So keep watching if you wanna check it out and see how I got this look and what shades I never use. <laughs> and it's gonna change, trust me. I'm gonna start using them more now. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you see when my next video drops. Thanks for being here. Hey friends. All right, let's get started. I thought it would be fun to do a get ready with me because I feel like a lot of times you gravitate towards the same colors. At least I do. And I really have no excuse except that I have my favorites, but I will be honest with you. There are some colors I have never tried and or ones that I have, I just don't use them every day. And I really don't know why, except that I just gravitate towards my favorites more. So I thought it would be fun if we do a get ready with me where I'm using completely different shades. Now, not, I'm gonna say this, not completely all of them. Your highlight colors aren't exactly ones you can just change up all the time unless your skin is constantly changing color. So those I'm gonna stay the same, but otherwise I'm gonna use as many different colors as I can. And I even picked some that I've never tried before. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I always do is use my eye primer. I've already fused my Lashify lashes, so those are good to go. And I put on some lip plumper, which is why my lips are red. So I put on City Lip, City Lips, so that my lips are ready to go by the time I get to that step. So, okay, we're gonna see how this goes. You guys, I'm gonna try some stuff. That I'm gonna try a highlight shade, actually, that I have not tried. Well, I don't wanna say ever, but practically ever. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of prime my face a little bit. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I did a review of, or I tested, I guess you could say, a bunch of setting sprays in my own scientific way. And I really do love this Scandinavia brand if you haven't checked it out, but my favorite was the Bridal. So I've been using that as kind of an alternative until our stay spray comes back. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that onto prime, let that dry a bit, and go ahead and get started with, oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed with this. Like I totally matched my shirt to my compact. That's okay, right? Um, this is the rose gold triple, guys. Triple decker. Like I loved the double, but I did not have all the options I wanted to on the daily basis. So this bad boy is metallic. This is the rose gold, but they are very similar in color. So let me just show you real quick. The rose gold, I believe, is already completely sold out. It sold out that fast. But in comparison, they are very all very subtle different. So this is champagne gold, rose gold, and the silver. Of course, I got them all because they are limited. 
So I'm hoping that enough people are obsessed with them like I am that they will maybe bring them back permanently. But if you do not follow me on Instagram, you might not know I have a giveaway going on with a rose gold hack stack. This baby holds eight and I put together my favorite eight lip and cheek shades plus the brush, the B squared blush and bronzer brush. So it's going on on Instagram all month long. Pretty much all you have to do is like, comment and engage on my photos and you'll be entered to win that. So I have that hidden back there so my kids don't steal it this next month. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with highlights. Now this is the part that's really not going to change for me. Um, Y'all know I am obsessed with my Magic Mango. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Buffy. I am not gonna change up the brushes because I feel like, <laughs> well, for one, I use almost all the brushes. Um, for two, it is, it's not that easy to just use a different brush. You're gonna get a completely different finish application and I just can't, I just can't. So <laughs> uh, I have used all of them in different ways, in different videos. A lot of those are over on Instagram if you're not following me there. I do show like a full face with one brush all the time. But over here, especially with my get ready with me's, I pick my faves, so bear with me. I'm gonna grab the Buffy and Magic Mango, tap in. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use this like I normally do to color correct my redness and my darkness. And something I was realizing because I was just cleaning some of my brushes was that I never really talk about this quick tip. And that is when you clean your brushes and you have brand spanking new, or they look like brand spanking new again, and you go in to like, pick up your product for the first time after, be a little bit leery that brand new, I don't say brand new. Well, if you're getting your product for the very first time and you have a brand new brush, compared to ones that have some product on it already, are gonna pick up a lot more product. So that being said, just be a little bit, um, what's the word, aware that it's gonna pick up more if it's clean. Okay, so if you're one of those people that are on always cleaning your brushes, you probably figured that out by now, but not everybody cleans their brushes as much as they should. So you might not know that. All right, so let's go in. I'm gonna use my finger and color correct under my eyes. Look at that magic. And this is a brand new mango as well. And that always makes a difference too, because obviously you're gonna get a lot more product when you tap in. They're not as dry um, when they're brand new. And you'll notice that after a while, I mean, the creams last a really long time. So after a while, some of them will start to dry out. Like my uh, contour here, obviously, I can see pan, you know, has been in this compact a lot longer. It's a lot drier and how I pick up product is gonna kinda of change as your creams dry out. Now you can always melt them back down, stir them up with the toothpick and get them kind of like brand new again, but be aware that brand new, brand like clean brushes, brand new creams, they're gonna be a lot creamier and you're gonna have to tap in a lot less than say after it's been sitting in your compact for two months. So, okay, so I'm pretty much color corrected, if I can pay attention, make sure I got it all. And if you're brand new, then go ahead and go in with your perfector all over, make sure you have got off excess. Press that layer in of color corrector before you go in with your next shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the B squared this time instead of the Buffy. Cause I feel like that does, it laid it on a little too thick for me, um, for my liking because it was a brand new mango and my brush was clean. So now I'm gonna go in with my main shade, my main highlight and this one's brand new again as well. So I'm just gonna barely tap in 
And then I'm gonna press on my main shade all over just by pressing on bouncing the brush to make sure I don't get too much. We don't wanna feel sticky or tacky. And I'm too lazy to spend five minutes perfecting my face. <laughs> Let's be real. You can apply heavier, but you're gonna have to utilize your perfector a whole lot more. And again, I like to be quick. So we're just evening all that out, toning down where that color corrector was a little bit too warm for me. And then I'm gonna use a little bit on my eyelids. Get all of that evened out, cause I've got a lot of purple. Get a nice base there. I feel like around my lips is getting super red <laughs> from that lip pumper, but hey, it works. It definitely works. Okay, so we went ahead and highlighted and I have a hair stuck on my face. Okay, so you can go ahead and perfect again. If you're new and you wanna really make sure you're keeping every layer nice and thin. Okay, let's get to our first brand new shade. So you guys know me, I tend to go for Olive or Astoria, sometimes Indigo Contour, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a different one. And let's go with Henna, okay? So Henna technically is a cool tone, but I have seen it pull warm on some skin tones. So I consider it kind of in between um, Ash and Olive, in my opinion. They're all three mid-tone shades, but I consider this one more warm than Ash. So I don't necessarily recommend it if you have redness on your skin, but it is, it's actually a very green undertone. It's like Olive undertone. They should have named this one Olive, in my opinion. But um, it doesn't pull red enough on me on my nose to where I can't wear it on my nose. I can wear it, it's just not my favorite because I have to apply more in order to see it. So I wear Mango Sandy, it is a mid-tone, so mid-tones you just have to apply more. But I feel like in my range, I can wear them all except the very lightest shades. So I'm just gonna pick up some on half of my brush like I normally do. See how you can't see it as much because I'm used to using Astoria, which is darker. Let's see. We're gonna just press it on. Oh my gosh, I cannot see that. And this has been sitting in my Artist Compact, so it's probably a little dry. So here's a tip. If you're all, if you're all of, if your contour is feeling dry, use the warmth of your finger and simply warm it up. Oh my gosh, guys. I, I literally forgot I had a ring on. <laughs> so that just got disgusting. All right, I'm just going to take that off and sit it over here. I mean, I was anticipating wiping off my finger, but I did not think that I was going to dig into it with my ring. Okay, let's go back. Anyway, use the warmth of your finger and kind of warm up. Um, the top layer, like I said, can dry out over time. Okay, and then try to get more on your brush. So, So like I said, mid-tone on me, I do have to apply more to see it, but it does not mean I can't wear it. So I can definitely see that now. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of press up to blend. And there we go. So beautiful color. I love that color. See if I can do this without getting too much on my brush. Okay, we're gonna go towards the corner of the mouth, stop about the edge of the eye, and press on. Press upwards to blend. Now, to make sure that they're even. <laughs> I feel like that's probably the hardest part 
of contouring when you're new, get them even. So that's why I load my brush the same way every time. That totally helps me get the same amount. So now I'm just gonna press it along my hairline. This, I feel like I'm gonna need a lot more product. My hairline just seems to be one of those places I have to apply more in order to see it. Like seeing it, I don't know. It looks natural, don't get me wrong, but. Like sometimes I wear a story on my cheeks and indigo on my hairline because indigo gives me a lot more definition up there. Okay, so blend down into the highlight, up into the hairline, and easy peasy, there we go. Okay, so with this shade, I'm gonna go a little bit under my bottom lip, going for the plumper look today. So just create that shadow. Now I could use this on my nose, but I'm gonna use a different shade. So I don't, I talk about this sometimes, but I probably not enough. Shadow is the one contour that is designed to not be used on the face, only on the nose which is technically on the face, but um, it is the most gray. It's actually a very, it's a different consistency. It's creamier and it is made just for the nose that pulls the most red on people. So I feel like a little goes a long way with this shade that you don't have to go in with very much. Like I try to just get, I'm afraid if I pounce, it's gonna get on too heavy. With the edge of my brush, and then I'm just gonna create that stripe using the straight edge of the detail. Okay. And then I kind of just blend that line up towards my brow. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped my brush. Up towards my brows. Kind of at the end to make tip look smaller. Okay, so shadow. If you're having any issues with nose contouring, I know that looks like really drastic right now, but it blends out like a dream. Try shadow. It's an incredible shade. Okay, so we'll go back to the nose in a second. Let's try what's next. I normally go in with my brightener, so. You guys know I am an Aura girl. I sometimes use linen for a pop, but I swear every time I see another artist use this shade, I'm like, man, that looks so good on her. Okay, so here's a little backstory. When I first started, um, before I was an artist and I was just a customer, you guys know me, I researched everything and I thought I would know what colors to buy. I've told this story before. So I ordered based on what all the charts that I saw on Pinterest said I would need. Okay, because I had freckles, all the charts said sunlit as my main shade. Okay, um, I can tell you now as an artist, that is one of the colors that can I, I never recommend with freckles because it pulled my freckles really wonky um, really yellow, gray, textured. Um, it's not a shade I recommend for freckles. Okay, that being said, um, it's also one of those shades that's a little tricky to color match online. Um, so I normally recommend people, I only ever recommend it as a brightener online. Um, normally I recommend people to try it for themselves or do it only on in-person color matches. Okay, so. I have definitely not tried that shade since that very first time. Um, I have never tried it on myself as an artist since. Okay, so when I originally tried it, I obviously was applying it as a brightener, not on top of any other shades. So you guys know by now, you have to use a highlight shade that matches the skin directly under it, otherwise it's gonna give you texture um, too light of a shade is going to look wonky. So I'm going to attempt it today over 
you know, I already have two shades under my eyes. So mango sandy. Um, I've already matched my darkest tones. So now I should be able to apply a brighter, lighter highlight and not get those issues. Do you guys think it's going to work? <laughs> so I normally use Aura. Aura is, let's see if I can show you the comparison. Aura is this one. Okay. It is yellow undertone because I do have yellow undertones because I'm a self tanner for one. So this is sunlit. Okay. Sunlit is very yellow. I know it looks super scary and I admit I'm a little scared to try it, but I see it used all the time and it's gorgeous. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, it's cream makeup. I can just wipe it off. So let's see. I'm just going to use my Buffy like I always do. Um, I might have to tap in a little bit because I'm sure this one's been in my palette <laughs> a really long time. Okay, so let's see what it's looking like. I'm scared, guys. I don't know. I might find my my new favorite shade. This is why I experiment. I've been wanting to try it for a while, and then every time I put on my makeup, I don't want to have to like take it off. <laughs> so I have to. It's not sitting bad. It looks a little yellow to me comparison, but I have not perfected yet. So we're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna see if the perfector will, because you guys know the perfector is magic. I mean, it does wonders once you put it in, right? So talk about brightening. <laughs> it is definitely brightening. And I feel like I'm laying it on probably a little thicker than I would on a normal basis, just so you guys can see it and to truly test it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go where I always brighten. So we're gonna go down those contour stripes. Whew, that's a lot right there. I don't need that much. Okay, Cupid's bow, center of the chin. I'm really gonna have to press that in. Center of the forehead to brighten. Okay, so one of the key things when you're using a brightener, really pressing it into the skin first with a dense brush like the Buffy really helps. Especially if you're applying it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's totally sitting in my pores. Don't freak out, press it in, then we can use that perfector. So, perfector is the true test. If it still looks makeupy after doing this, it's not gonna work. But I'm impressed that so far, it is not emphasizing the look of my fine lines, which to me is a huge test. True test is also gonna be if I look too yellow in pictures because it is a more yellow brightener and is best for those with really yellow undertones. If you do not have yellow undertones, don't try it. <laughs> I will tell you that much. You gotta at least have some yellow in your skin or it's gonna look straight up yellow. So I'm probably perfecting more than I normally do just to make sure because I can see it sitting in my lines a little bit, which is normal considering how much I applied. Oh my gosh, I'm like starting to push too hard. <laughs> I'm turning red. But besides that, because I was trying to get out of that, my problem areas, sometimes the warmth of your finger can help. There we go, much better. You guys, I am pleasantly surprised besides the fact I have a piece of glitter on my face. It is not at all doing what it did when I first tried it. It's amazing when you know a little bit about how this makeup works 
it can be such a game changer. So just by layering it over my normal shades that work for me, this is why a lot of the accent brighteners are very versatile, personal preference, and you can switch it up depending on what you like. So what do you guys think? Does it look yellow? I'll take a picture and you'll have to tell me at the end. Do you guys approve yay or nay on the sunlit? So sunlit as a brightener. I can't believe I'd never tried it. <laughs> Nothing like three years later. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. So we've highlighted, contoured. What is next? Okay. So this is the next thing. So next I would probably go ahead and do Bella bronzer or my lip and cheek. So you guys know I love Bella with my glow illuminator. Bella's out. It sucks. Bella's out of stock. Um, I have seen people use two different um, alternatives to Bella. Both Icon, okay? It is a very warm, lighter, bronzy look. Or Muse, okay? So these are highlight shades. Um, they are for our dark skin girls. And if you compare Bella Bronzer and Muse, they are very similar. Now, Bella's um, formulation is different. It is like a sheer formula meant to be built upon. Um, it blends super well. It's different, okay? But if you're wanting to bronze it up and you don't have any Bella, this can work. So I'm gonna, obviously, I've never even used part of this. I'm gonna use my finger and get off that top layer, okay? Because again, I've I've used it, but I've never, I don't use it on a daily basis. So it's sitting in my compact, getting dry. So I kind of warmed it up. I'm just gonna barely tap. And that's probably gonna be a lot. So now I'm going to distribute one tap. Can you guys tell? Whoa, one tap, that's all you need. Like barely, holy moly, to bronze it up. I'm gonna have to really blend that out. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty though. So similar, it's a little warmer, I think. Darker, a little darker, a little warmer. But it still bronzes. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna barely touch it to do my neck. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> Obviously my neck is also turning red from me pushing, but still. Okay, so pretty. I'm just, I since I already brightened the center of my face, I like to kind of stick with this area. You can put a little bit on your nose and a little bit on your chin, but I like to keep, I call it the diamond, this area light and bright, and then I just bronze through here since we just brightened that. So that was Muse. Oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna be using that more because that is a really beautiful bronze. If you totally build it up just like the other. Little goes a long way, so be a little bit leery of that. All right, next is Lip and Cheeks. You guys know that's my fave. Um, this is hard because I wear them all. You guys know I mix them all. I don't even have them all in here because a lot of them are in here. Like my daily go-tos, I have six. So I'm going to pick two shades because you guys know I like to layer that I never wear. And I'm trying to go springy here. So, um, okay. For some reason, I never wear baby watermelon. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's because it's more of a cool tone. I tend to gravitate toward warm tones. So if you compare, I get a, this question a lot, baby watermelon and pink grapefruit, they're very similar. Okay, let's swatch them. So baby watermelon, okay. I gotta remember which one's which. Baby watermelon, 
pink grapefruit. Do you see how similar they are? Okay, pink grapefruit was the first shade I ever purchased. It is like my OG fave of a, just a beautiful pink, looks good on anyone. Baby watermelon is very similar. It's just slightly cooler. Can you see that? Um, I don't know what it is. I tend to go for warmer pinks um, or corally pinks or something like that, but, or nude pinks. You guys know I love my nudes. So we're gonna wear a little baby watermelon and petal. Now, Petal is one of those that is lighter than most. Um, it is glossy. And I can't wear it by itself on my lips. It turns my lips like much lighter than my natural skin tone. But I do like to layer it to switch up colors because it will lighten anything you put on. Okay. So it is a gloss, which you guys know I love glosses as well. So let me show you guys now i have worn this on my cheeks by itself it does show up it's just a different kind of shade because it is lighter so it pulls different than wearing one that is you know about your skin tone or darker it just wears differently so i'm gonna go ahead and oh my gosh i barely tapped i didn't realize that one was so pigmented i'm gonna tap it off a little bit <laughs> on the back of my hands, probably because I rubbed my finger in it first. You guys know that I'll warm it up. So, baby watermelon, we're going into spring, summer. It is like a pink shade that I feel like anyone can wear. And both of these are pretty cool in my opinion. Um, so we'll see what we think. Okay, so I really like that. I think why I really like it is because I just put Muse on. Muse is warm, that bronzer under it, and totally gives me a tone that I really like. So um, I do do that trick a lot with Bella um, by putting a little Bella even over your lip and cheeks. It can totally switch up the color and it warms it up. You guys know me, I like my warmth. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of petal Okay, it's gonna lighten it some, can you see that? And it's gonna add the glow. You guys know I need my glow. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the cheeks. It will kind of tone down after a few minutes. We know it all, we know they do that. Um, so kind of give it a, a minute and then we can kind of pull it over if we need to. If you got it too far. Okay, so what's next? I have to literally look in my compact. Be like, what have I not done? Let's see, lip conditioner, what's next? All right, we're gonna go ahead and powder it up. So, uh, let's see, do I got any creasing? I'm good there. There's obviously no other powder other than vanilla dust. So I'm gonna set that sunlit in place there. Barely touch the powder so I don't get too much. And then I'm gonna put more on my lids, kind of get ready for my eyeshadow. Excess goes there, right here, right here. Okay, now what else do I never do? I rarely ever use the powder bronzer anymore and it's funny because I when we when I first started as an artist I wore it every day because I loved the way it made my contour kind of in it intensified it yet blended it and made it last longer all at the same time by just using a little bit of caiman over it so let's rock it I use the same big brush and just do that, that's it. Now, if you like a matte look, I definitely recommend it. It is a very light bronzer. It doesn't exactly, I feel like bronze, I use it as a setting powder. Okay, so let's go ahead and illuminate before we get to the eyes and lips. So my ride or die is usually Photoshop. Let's see, let's do a powder today. I 
you guys know me, I love all the creams. I usually go with a cream illuminator, but I don't wear the powders as much. They are more intense. They'll give you that wow factor glow for sure. And I tend to go back and forth between Photoshop and Georgia. Okay. Um, let's do Starlet. So I don't really ever talk about this one. Um, it is iridescent. So if you like that look, I feel like it's hard to describe because it looks really white in the 10, but it gives that purpley, I don't know how to describe it besides iridescent glow. Okay. Little goes a long way with our powders. I always use this brush to apply it and I always just tap once and tap off excess. So you guys can see, I mean, can you see like the purplish glow? Okay, so it gives a very similar effect to um, our eyeshadow as you wish, that iridescence. So it is subtle because it's not as of a wet highlight look as say like Glamazing, which is another one I never wear because it's, it's all the, it's very icy and like it is very pigmented and glowy. So I tend to go towards those warm tones, the golds, um, which is why I just don't gravitate towards this, but it's gorgeous, especially if you like that look. So I'm gonna use a little bit under my brows It's not as bright as um, some of the others. So can you tell it's more subtle? So let's use a little pop of Glamazing in the inner corner so you guys can see. Um, this one is much more of that wow factor. It's almost those that silvery, if you like white icy brighteners, you would be obsessed with Glamazing. Okay, my gosh, my hand is getting out of control. Before we move on to eyes, let's do lips real quick. So, one of the things um, I don't do very often, but I really like it, is to use the Eyeshadow Everything brush to line my lips. So, if you are one of those people that loves the trick of making your lips look better with the shadow by using contour to line. This is one of those tricks that make it amazing. So I usually use Astoria or Indigo, but today I'm gonna try Ash. Um, this is also a really good one to use. And I'm just going to dip in my brush that is technically for eyeshadow, but it makes a really great, like, soft line. So that you can kind of line the right at the border of your lips, but it's gonna make that shadow appear, make them appear larger. Hopefully you guys can tell. I'm trying to show one, but it's not working. Okay, I always feel like it looks really wonky until I put color on my lips. So let's go ahead and stick with those two lip and cheek shades. I'm gonna grab the multitasker and I'm gonna fill it in with baby watermelon. There's a hair on my brush. I feel like it's easier to see how cool it is on my lips in comparison to my cheeks. I mean, I cleaned my brush and obviously there was hair on my towel. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. Like my lips look bigger, probably the plumper plus the liner. And then we can take that lighter shade and just do the center. Okay, to make the center look bigger. Now this is one thing I never do um, because I usually don't spend so much time on my lips. Let's be real. Um, is that then people like to take a brightener. So I would pick linen and you can outline. Oh my gosh, that was way too much. Hang on. Your Cupid's bow to make it pop. Can you guys tell? Dang, I feel like my lips look big. <laughs> big for me, which is not very big. But still, if you like to spend time, it totally makes that outline. It makes like, what do they call it? A lip flip? Like when you flip, like get Botox to flip your upper lip. That's what it looks like. But hey, it's a at-home version. Much cheaper. <laughs> so, all right. Now that we did that, I'm going to go ahead and fill in my brows and I will be right back since that's kind of boring. Okay guys, I'm back. I feel much better. There's really no other way to do my brows. <laughs> my opinion, I used an angle brush and my trusty trust eyeshadow and I can't live without that bad boy. So let's do eyes. That's the fun part. Here's where I couldn't believe I had never tried this shade. I th I'm pretty sure I checked my palette and I have tried every other shade mascara makes except for this one. And I saw somebody use it and I was like, dang, that looks gorgeous. Why have I never tried that shade? And again, it's because I tend to go for warm colors. I, do I go for golds on my skin tone. I feel like golds look better than silver. So. I tend to go with golds. Now, the color I never tried is Glass Slipper, which is straight up silver. And it is like very pigmented, very foiled, and very shimmery, okay? I'm pretty sure I've used this color on my daughter, but we have very different skin tones. So, um, I can't believe I haven't tried it. So I'm gonna try a different way simple eye look using this color and I'm excited to try it guys I've never tried it so let's just try it for the first time on camera um okay so I'm still going to use my trusty mid-tone matte browns in my crease because let's be real I've used every brown we own uh, or we own we make <laughs> many many times but I'm just going to kind of mix basic and bubba because I can't really decide which one I want for this look. So I want kind of a little bit of warm and cool because you guys know, I usually recommend using warm and cool in your eye looks. I feel like it makes it more balanced, but that shade is very cool. So I'm gonna use a warmer color for my darker shade. And then that's gonna be my cool shade. So this one's gonna be pretty neutral in the crease. Okay, so I'm just using the eyeshadow everything brush and swirling it, windshield wiper in it, <laughs> and placing that color. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same two halo in it under my eyes and I just realized that that is the same brush I used for my contour on my lips. So I just got contour under my eyes, but you know what? They're multitaskers. They work as well as eyeshadow. I use them all the time. 
so it's okay. But I am gonna grab a clean one. Oh my gosh, and this is the one that had, no, that's the one that had Starlet on it. Gosh, that's okay. I wiped it off. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of blend that out. Cause I feel like it got a little darker than I had originally anticipated. Kind of a hot mess today, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so flip it over and blend if needed. There we go. Slight definition. You could stop right there, but we're not gonna. We're gonna keep going. Okay, this is gonna be a super easy eye look. Four shades. Now we're gonna use Lullaby. Okay, I love this shade. I use it all the time. Um, but it's a beautiful, I'm running out of arm space mauve matte okay i'm gonna use the blend and tap which i have started using this brush for like my entire eye lately and it's so good like so that one's new i used to only use it in my outer corner but i love using it on my lid as well so i'm just gonna use the flatter side and press that color just on the lid Easy peasy. Now, if you feel like you need to blend those two, grab your clean eyeshadow, everything. Go back and forth in the crease. Okay. And let's see. Gosh, should we do the fun color next or the outer corner? So let's go ahead and do the outer corner because I'm really excited about adding this gloss slipper very last. So I'm gonna flip around the blend and tap to the dome end. And here's where I'm gonna use my warm shade. I'm gonna use Philly. Now Coco could also work for this. They are very similar. Um, and I'm just going to kind of tap in and then tap on that outer corner for depth and to kind of deepen the crease. And so far, the eyes look very warm, in my opinion, because I feel like that lullaby is a warm shade as well. Okay. Blend, blend, blend. repeat. Right. Now to clean up because I totally went too far. Great thing about creams, just kind of swipe it, press and you're golden. Swipe to blur and then you can go back in with that brush kind of blur the edges back where you want them who's ready for a fun shade so I'm debating on if we want to make this super pigmented or not let's try it without foiling it first and see what it looks like. And then we can always add a little extra punch, but I'm going to use the multitasker. This flat shade or this flat shade, this flat end is really good to pack on color and not get fallout, especially with these really foiled pigmented sh shades like glass slippers. So I'm just going to kind of press in. This shade is very pigmented. We're just gonna we're just gonna press that on the center, not the center. The <laughs> can I talk at all today? The inner corner of the eye.
for that brightness, that pop, that cool tone. And then I like it a little bit more subtle, actually, I think. I think if we foiled it, it would be too metallic. So I'm just gonna use my brush and kind of blend that out. So hopefully you guys can see the difference it makes and how it lightens up, brightens your eye, makes your eyes look bigger if you keep it in that inner corner. Now you see how pigmented it can go on, but I'm just kind of pressing it on and then I'm kind of just pulling it towards the center to kind of fade that out. And get it to kind of ombre in. Now I like this side better than this side. <laughs> Why does that always happen? Okay, we're just gonna kind of blur that and I'm gonna add a little bit more. To this side and try to even them out. Okay, worst comes to worst, you know what you can do? Not very hard. You take a little bit more lullaby and you layer. There is nothing wrong with layering eyeshadows and building up that color to where you like it. So if you mess up, there's no mess ups. Just layer a little bit more of that lid shade, Lullaby, okay, tones it down, and then you can go back in and layer until you get that same effect on both sides. And there you go. I feel like I'm getting it. Hopefully it's translating on camera. It looks even over here, at least. At least it looks even somewhere. Okay, blur, and now we clean up. So one way to clean up is the perfector. You can also just use a big fluffy brush. and that Buffy that has your excess highlight. And there you go. Okay, I feel like this eye look needs liner. So let's see, do I have any liner I don't ever use? Hmm, probably not. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go with, I'm gonna go with Black Friday, it's our only eyeliner and then I'm just going to top it with something different. I always kind of set mine with a powder and I usually always go with coal but we're going to try something different. So let's go ahead and a nice line. I feel like that looks so much better. Okay I'm loving that liner and I don't want to dye it down at all. I normally do it with coal. It kind of brings it back down to more of a neutral look, I feel like. So I wanna keep that jet black. So I'm gonna add Salem, which is our matte black eyeshadow. And it's gonna kind of set that in place. It's not gonna smudge it out at all. So our liner definitely smudges out if you want it to. Um, I wanna make sure it stays nice and black. So Salem will totally work. Love it. Now let's see. Hey, okay. I'm going to go back in. Gosh, I keep picking up the wrong brush and I'm going to go back in with a little bit of lullaby, which is what I put on my lid under the eye. So smoke it out a little bit more. I kind of always like to do that last. Now, I feel like my inner corners lost their brightness, so let's add that back. We're gonna go back to Glamazing, which is gonna give that cool toned pop. 
right there. And I'm suddenly wondering why I never wear these cool tones. They're so pretty. Oh my gosh. There's too many options. I think that's the problem. There's just too many options. It's so easy to get like set in your ways when you get in a routine and you're like, gosh, these colors are gorgeous. Why would I ever change? But then like you see all the possibilities. It's just too much fun not to play, right? Okay, friends, so I almost forgot. I'm gonna go ahead and set. So if you like a dewy look, go ahead and set. If you like a matte look, you can spray and then you can powder, but I already powdered, so. This one's very fine, so you have to spray it like a million times. So, all right, guys, there we go. All right, friends, so that's it. That is all of the colors I rarely ever use, but I hope you like this look, something a little bit different, a little bit more cool toned. Um, if you like cool tones, you'll for sure love it. And thank you guys so much for being here. Love you. Bye.